Joining me right now is one of the hottest heavyweights in Australia, Justin Taffa. He will be challenging for the heavyweight title at XFC 36 against Jeremy Joyner. What's going on, Justin? No, nothing much, man. I might just close these lines. Um, I just had a session earlier this morning, and so now I grab some food to eat. No, How has training out. been going for this camp? Oh man, it's been going really good. Um, you know, I'm blessed to have my little brother join me. He's a uh, he's in glory, and he fights in um, Madison Square Garden next week. So, man, there's there's nothing like having you know someone like that to spar with and train with. How helpful is it to have someone like your brother having consecutive camps with you leading up to these big fights? Man, you know, like just having that kind of experience with the striking and, and the, having that world-class level there, like, with you every day, man, it's, it's really good because you guys kind of feed off each other, especially when your fights are one week apart. You know, it's, man, you guys are chasing the same goal. And, and, and the thing is, he's, you know, like a world-class striker, but at the same time, he's going to keep me honest, man. He's not going to, like, pitter pat at me and, and be like, oh, you know, oh, he's a bit tired. I'll just... Go easy on him, man. He's, he's my little brother, man. He wants to bash the big brother all the time. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's go back to last year. You made your MMA debut at XFC 30 in May. You won via TKO in the second round. Looking back at your performance, what did you think? Oh man, like honestly, I, I was meant to. I was. I was meant to pull out of that fight. Like I, I had a couple crack ribs, but you know, like it's the fight game, man, and. A lot of people were looking forward to this fight. A lot of my family were already bought tickets and stuff, and the hype was already there. So I couldn't just pull out. And um, man, considering the, the like, you know, the, the physical condition I was in, I thought I did all right. You know, like I couldn't breathe after my first jab. Man, I was like, that's when I started regretting fighting with the rib injury. But man, it's good, you know, because now people are feeding off that. You know, going off that that first fight, I thought it was very poor, but. It's good, man. They'll be surprised when, you know, what, what comes next, man. Like, but I, I, you know, like, I could have done a lot better. But, um, you know, I still won. I still grinded it out. And, um, yeah, a lot of people yeah. did expect you to come out and just destroy the guy. And it was kind of a, a back-and-forth affair until you finally finished him. So that kind of tells a lot about your condition, you know, the way you performed in that fight because – People were expecting something spectacular, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I did have one amateur MMA fight, you know. And, and I think a lot of people, they saw, like, man, it was from, like, a first-round knockout or something, and everyone was like, oh, damn, I can't wait for the next one. And, yeah, it was, it was a bit disappointing on my end, but it just, you know, maybe, maybe it, it creates more anxiety yeah. or, you know, more of a little wonder of what, what's next kind of thing, like, was that a one-off for the, the uh, pro debut? Like, was that a one-off? You know, or was that was that the way I'm fighting? Man, it's just keep you keep keep people guessing, I guess. For sure, um, you've been you've been known to be crushing the competition. You know, around Australia, winning titles all over the place for Muay Thai kickboxing. When did you actually start dedicating yourself to training MMA? Man, I think it was um, you know, like. I had my first camp with Mark Hunt, you know, they invited myself and my brother and, uh, you know, like we we're sparring and then we we're just striking, you know, and it just, you, you just don't feel, you know, like, I don't know what it is, man, you feel limited, I guess, because then you just feel like a little kid because everyone else is striking and grappling and they're doing the whole lot and you're just there just to punch and then they're like, oh, no, don't take him down. He doesn't know how to be, you know, he doesn't know how to grapple. I mean, you, you don't feel too you like you didn't feel too good, man. It makes you feel like you're like a little kid. So after that, I was like, you know what, MMA is like it's the sport now. Like, yeah, boxing, kickboxing is all good, and striking is all good. But that feeling of vulnerability, man, feeling like you're like a little baby, is like yeah, I don't like that feeling. So that's why I was like, nah, man, I'm gonna drop the kickboxing. I'm gonna go straight into MMA. Who are some of the fighters that you saw, you know, transition from striking to MMA and being successful? And you're like, hey, man, I could do it just like them. Oh, man, Mark, you know, Mark's a prime example. Um, this is, you know, one of my um, 
there are guys to watch now, like Israel Adesanya, he's another one. You know, but what 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 people don't don't see is there is work in the grappling side beforehand. There has been, man. I like I know Izzy's been you know, he's a blue belt now, he's been doing jujitsu for few, you know, six, seven years and 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 all that. But um yeah, I've seen a lot a lot of those those kickboxers or boxers, Holly Holm, which is another one. I think if if um they do respect the grappling side, then they tend to to do better. Whereas um yeah, I don't know about guys like Gokan Saki, man. I don't know about man. You know, his last his last fight it wasn't wasn't too good, eh? But with those small gloves, you know, when you're throwing hard like that, anybody gets hit, they can go down, right? Yeah, that's it. And I think another thing too is like in kickboxing and boxing, the gloves are a lot bigger. A lot of people use that to block. You know, there's a lot more, a lot more, a lot more gloves to block the face or block the hits. Whereas in the MMA gloves, man, you know, there's, only, there's only so much you can, you can block. And I think that's, that, that was the case, man. He just got, got that lift from Ranchi and, and Saki got slipped. After having so many fights in the ring, does fighting MMA seem that much different for you? Uh, not really, man. You know, like, um, I, I don't think... I come from a rugby, rugby background, so, like, all that tackling and, and grappling stuff comes natural man I've been doing that since I was five man you know like and then the striking as well so I feel comfortable in there in the cage and and the transition wasn't wasn't too you know like too much of a jump it's been more than a year since your debut has it been difficult to find opponents or or were there other reasons that you've been away from the cage for so long yeah it was a bit of both you know like I, I did have some family you know, I lost a couple of family members and, and had to attend funerals and all that. And in my culture, you know, we're a massive family oriented culture. And these funerals take a lot, a lot of time and a lot of money and stuff. And, you know, I, I need to support my family first. But at the same time, finding the right opponents, another, another thing that I was, I was, you know, having trouble with. Like, the only offers I was getting were guys that were seasoned veterans. You know, seeing that I do have this little bit of hype and they, they want to, you know, take that hype away from me while I'm still fresh in the game, you know. Other people, they, they have one fight and they're fighting another guy with one or two fights or at least five fights or least, you know, or, or less. Whereas me, man, they, they want me to have number one or two in Oceania, man. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just, I'm just starting as like everyone else. I, sh I should be starting. But then this fight came along and I was like, man, it's been a year. You know, like the only offers I was getting were big names and, and, and guys that, right at the top that, that I've had 10 plus fights, but, you know, at the same time, time's right, you know, time's ticking. I'm still young. I, I should just take advantage of it. When I lose, man, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, you're challenging uh, Jeremy Joyner for the heavyweight title. What are your thoughts on this opportunity? Man, I think it's a really good opportunity, man. Like, I think stylistically, you know, like, I see he's a bit of a banger. And, and, and he wants to swing, man, but I'm like, I'm all good for that, man. Leading up to this title bout, where have you been training and who have you been working with other than your brother? Yeah, so my older brother, usually, he usually does, um, does all our, our like, striking and, and, and looks at videos and all that and see where we can exploit him in, in the striking um, part. But I've been training at uh, Infinity in North Lakes. You know, there's uh, the instructor, Kieran Cronin, there, and... The wrestling coach there, Eric Simmons is there. They're really good, man. Like um, both both lefties too, so like fits perfect with me. And then they got, they got you know like a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. Eric being a college wrestler back in the states, and 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 Kieran being a black belt in jiu-jitsu and also fighting in MMA actively now. Joiner, if you look back at last year, right, he won the title, yeah. but then he lost twice fighting for other promotions. Do you think he will be too cautious against you and that will open him up for punishment? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know the way his mind works. But I, feel, I do feel like he will be, you know, pondering on those two losses. And, and especially, I don't know, I think he got finished in both fights too. So he will be, they'll be at the back of his head. You know, I know that that mental side of losses can come into play like, like you saw in Garneau in his last fight, the way that loss affected him. You know, like, it can go either way, man. It just depends on, on the individual and their mentality towards how they take their loss. 
you seem to have a huge support group around you, Team Tafa. How important are these people to you? Man, very important, you know. When you have those days where, you know, like those tough days in camp, when they grind for real, man, you just go back and you look, you know, you look at their support, you look at the comments that are, that are being posted on your page, man, and that's, the, that's that little push that you need, man. Like, so it's not only yourself in it now, there's other people behind you backing you. The support's really what gives me that extra, you know, that extra push in those sessions, man. What do you say to all the haters that believe that you're not ready for, you know, this type of fight and it's a little too much too early for you? Ah, uh, man, my words for them is to come watch the fight, you know, and then they'll see. How do you see this fight playing out? Do you see, you know, a quick finish or do you see some long grind fest happening? Man, either way, I'm prepared for it, eh? You know, like, for myself, I don't mind. I really, I want to test myself and see how these fourth and fifth rounds go. Like, I've, you know, as you said before, I fought in the later rounds in kickboxing. And I like that little test, man. That, that's what the sport's about. You know, this, this whole thing's about being, about testing yourself and seeing, seeing how far their mind can push their body, man. But, you know, um, but I do feel like it'll be a finish. I know this guy likes to brawl. He likes to swing hooks and stuff. But this is a different puncher here, man. There's a lot of people that can, can, can um, you know, account for that. And that's for sure, man. All right. July 28th, XFC 36 main event. Justin Taffa will fa uh, challenge Jeremy Joyner for the heavyweight title. Thank you, Justin, for your time. And, uh, yeah, definitely good luck on this fight. It's going to be huge. Yeah, for sure. Everybody watch, man. Thanks for having me, eh?